Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Pints and Quartz, a show brought to you by the Craft Beer Nation. Today is Thursday, January 21st, and we are talking to each other tonight. Uh, we we we, <laughs> we just we just got season three up and going. Um, you saw the episode last week where we didn't have a guest signed up, we, and we don't have a guest signed up for tonight. However, t- uh, next week's guest is going to be Neil Witty. I think I I misspoke last week. Neil Witty is going to be joining us next week. He's actually one of eleven certified cicerones in the world, and the solar mm-hmm. system, and the universe. In the galaxy, all that stuff, whatever is bigger than the universe, I think. Anyway, Neil Whitty is going to be joining us next week. Um, it's not that often that we get to speak to certified um, master Cicerones. We did once before a couple we years ago. We talked to him, yeah. Well, we, we talked to we, Neil as well. Yeah, and a couple years ago when we did the Big Sip, we spoke with uh, Nicole Ernie is her name, right? Nicole Ernie, yeah. yeah Nicole she, Ernie. She's also one of the persons in charge for the Cicerone For the program, program. Yeah. yeah, so... Um, one of eleven in the world. Um, you know the, the the concentration of the sort of master cicerones in the world seem to be California, um, Illinois, I think, and the two of them in Scotland, uh, uh, Martin, not Martin, James, either Martin or James, one of the two from Brewdog, and another guy at Brewdog. So uh, be sure to join us next week for that show. We would love for you to join us and and, and shoot us some questions for us to ask them on air, um, since like I said, you don't get to speak to certified master cicerones that often. Absolutely. So that said, tonight's show we're gonna kind of talk about. Uh, I guess we're gonna start out talking about the best of 2015. Um, the three of us, all we all feel like we've had some fantastic beers in 2015, and we feel like now is an appropriate time to recap that. If you saw the Friday night episode this past Friday, we kind of touched on that a little bit, but uh, we want to take a chance to do that tonight on this particular show and talk about beers that we thought were awesome, and then we'll get into um, well, one a very I guess I'll say a very um, widespread and surprising issue with a with a very imp- well a very popular beer that's been released Absolutely. this year. So, without further ado, Pints and Quartz, season three. Okay, so I just had less some room for Gil to edit later <laughs> on. <laughs> <laughs> so, as we said, we can start out talking about some of the best beer that we've had in 2015. Gil, let's go ahead and, and start with you, man. What do you uh, talk what to? Do you, us. What do you? Yeah, talk to us. <laughs> what, what were some of your some of your some of the beers that that stroke your memory well? Yeah, well, I had a. That was a lot, man. That was probably the on the four and a half, almost five years I've been drinking craft beer. I think the last year was by far the best year for me when it comes to craft beer. Mm -hmm. And I think it has to do with the choices. There's so much stuff, so much people doing such an amazing thing there. Um, But my top one is uh, when I was uh, up um, in Michigan, I went to Dark Horse Brewing Company. And so happened they had a... Yeah, I've, I've, I've talked about this beer here before, but it's just, it was memorable. Um, It's called... um, Coco Nibbler, uh, Barrel Waged. That beer was creamy, flavorful, lots of chocolate on it. And, you know, the alcohol content didn't come through at all. It was just nice and smooth. And I think for me, that was probably, uh, if not the best, one of the top beers I had uh, last year. What was the ABV on it? It's a good question. I should know. I should have written this down, but uh, I'll let you know in a second. Um, the other, the other uh, uh, let's see, Dark Horse, uh, the other amazing uh, uh, beer I had was this year, uh, two, the two, uh, which I have copies here, uh, the Aztecs and the coffee, the Boulevard Stouts uh, from their uh, Series mm-hmm. X this year. Yeah. I think oh, from was, what Series, series X? Yeah, uh, I think they call the Series X all the stouts. Uh, oh, the smokestack series, and then yeah. like a, a little something yeah. else added to it. Yeah, they it, they call the the X Series mm-hmm. X or something or Stout X something like that, and uh, uh, both the Aztec chocolate and um, I would and love the, to have the, one the of those. The coffee were amazing, amazing, amazing. Boulevard, I, uh, 
is doing uh, awesome stuff with their special series. Uh, I really bet I, I bet I would awesome. drink that stout with the Aztec chocolate if I had one. <laughs> 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 oh, you know, you may. Yeah. Um, we'll see. Savers coming uh, up. Gil. Don't, <laughs> Gil, don't drink the one that you have. Savers coming up, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we well actually I got I got probably three or four bottles of it this year. So I think that was another great thing. It was uh, readily available. It was not a beer that it was hard to find on anything. Um, so both both of them are on the stout side of things and uh, uh, heavy beers uh, that I really like it. And and I think it's more like a, maybe not the greatest. In one point, I think they were great because the overall they were well-rounded beers, uh, lots of flavor. Uh, and I also liked uh, not a specific beer, but a group of beers that I had um, at a brewery call, and I have a, one of their beers right here. Uh, These guys are from um, from Colorado, Crooked Stave. Mm -hmm. uh, if some of you. Uh, I, I always loved sour, and there's a there's a brewery down uh, North Carolina called Wicked Weed, which, which makes amazing mm -hmm. sours. But um, I think I visit probably 50 breweries last year outside of PA, and uh, uh, Crooked State it was probably the best brewery I've been. Uh, every single beer I try there was amazing. So you mean you, exactly? So you mean that was the best for beer, not overall experience, just for what they were. Everything, producing? yeah. Uh, I think uh, I didn't have a bad beer. Yeah, I I didn't have a single bad beer from them, uh, and the, and their batch uh, number fifty was a uh, uh, was aged uh, was wild. They called it wild uh, wild brat. I think mm -hmm. uh, was really good. So yeah, so Coco Nibbler, uh, the Aztec chocolate from. Uh, Boulevard uh, and uh, batch number 50 from Crooked Stave. Uh, so two stouts and one sour. Didn't I? I have some IPAs that I loved, but none of them are my top three this year. Okay, so you. Okay, so you went top three. Okay, yeah, you limited um, to three. What? Wait, wait, well, wait, I didn't wait, go wait, top wait, three. What about? What about? What about, what about I just like mentioned. This? I just mentioned three, but uh, you know. Let's say like new stuff, um, like things that you you've never tried 2015. That you you've never you know like you've had well, some. Different well, series of Boulevard smokestacks. I know, I know where Freddie's going. <laughs> no, no, I'm just saying, like, serious. Like, but Gil travels a lot, man. There's a lot of things that he's never tried before. Like, again, the the Dark Horse, you know, that fell right. That's the only thing I've tried before. Copper, it, copper yeah. kettle, copper kettle too. Oh, um, that's yeah, uh, the copper. Yeah, you, you know, yeah. There's some some beers that I, I didn't pick because the, but I should give mention to the brewery and overall. But uh, I know where. Uh, uh, Randy is going to, and uh, this little guy right here. Uh, no, that's not it. You gave it to Freddie. <laughs> oh, I, ga I gave to Freddie. Yeah. Uh, kettle face. Um, not kettle face. Copper uh, kettle. Cap copper, copper kettle. kettle. <laughs> copper kettle in Denver, Colorado, and I'll be there in a, this year again. Uh, they have this uh, Mexican stout. Mexican uh, stout. Mexican chocolate stout. Yeah, that which was, was amazing. Uh, it, ri it rivals Westbrook Mexican cake, in my opinion. Yeah. To mm -hmm. me, it actually edges. I mean, I'm not going to say it's lips it, and bound better, but it edges better. I think it's so. I talked about this rounded beer. The only thing I thought that for me in my in my palate was I wish it had a little bit more body to it, just a tad. I felt like it was like if that thing was a little bit like a little thicker, I think it would just been absolutely perfect for me. You know See, what I mean? Freddie Freddy wants his thoughts to be like, like trickery. No, 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 not, not like sweet like that. I'm not talking about like trickery. He's like, listen, I love Hardywood. Trickery is like, like pure, like. That was another. Like, amazing, like yeah. that was like, like you live in the hood and you're drinking Kool Aid with two pounds of sugar. That kind of sweet. <laughs> it was just like unbelievably sweet. But I, that was probably like that's one of the things I was thinking. Like I drank a lot of that kind of style of beer this year, uh, 2015. Like tons of like stouts with chili, you know, with chili bait, like uh, adjuncts. Copper kettle. Gil sent it to me probably later in the year. Uh, I thought about it too, and I mean that that's definitely up there. It's a little different, but it was it was a lot spicier. Yeah. But it, it, it was but but it was a little like it, it was, at the same time it wasn't like overbearing. Yeah, exactly. And but that's the only the, my only complaint was just if it had a little bit more mouthfeel, 
Don't I don't do even. It. I don't even I mean, think that's. A, I don't even think that's a complaint though. That's just something that you would like yeah, to yeah. see change. No, I mean, that, that, yeah, that, that beer was phenomenal. Hey, maybe I should rephrase that. I said top three. There, there's no top three. I couldn't. I could not make a top ten, 2015. That yeah. would be yeah, very, yeah. very hard. I, I couldn't make. I could make a top ten, but I couldn't. I couldn't rank them. Right. Yeah, that'd be well, I, I couldn't even make a top good. ten. I, I, just I make. Mean, uh, this was the first year I drink Trillium, and mm. there are a couple of Trillium beers like there's Slipper Street and um, mm-hmm. and the one that the, with the mosaic dry hop. Was just uh, four awesome. point mosaic. Yeah, no. And, and I'm mosaic. very happy to see a brewery going back to bottle condition IPAs. Yeah. I know you know people don't like the murkiness on a lot of IPAs. Yeah. I'm the other way. I like yeah. that. I give think that's yeah. Give me turbid or give me death. Yes. <laughs> Isn't that what Patrick Henry said? Anyway, Fred, I'm gonna go before you because because if you go yeah. first, it's gonna sound like I'm like I'm riding on Boston's coattails. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, going, I'm going the other way, man. I'm going the other okay. way. Okay. Okay. Well, let me. My my list is still it's still the same list from uh from Friday yeah. night. And I'm gonna start out actually with a beer. The, the first time I had this beer was this year, and it was uh Sammy Claus Baroque. Um, it's you know if if anybody's followed uh, Craft Beer Nation or Pints and Quartz for a while now, you understand, you understand that my um, my palate was not necessarily geared toward lagers, but the Sammy Claus Baroque is actually a Doppelbach, and that was an amazing beer. Like, it does not drink like a lager. It drinks like a big, full-bodied ale, huge sweetness, huge raisins, huge um, dark, dark pitted fruit. Uh, it almost kind of reminds me of Dogfish uh, Raison Dextra. Raison Dextra. Raison Dextra, or however you say it. Yeah. Remind, reminds me of that in the sweetness and in the body. And, of course, the ABV is like 14%, so it's a big beer. It doesn't necessarily drink like 14%, but a very, very delicious beer nonetheless. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and, and, and put these two together. Uh, Trillium, I mean, so it's two, but it's, I can really name like three or four. Trillium Uppercase, um, the the not this most recent batch of Galaxy Dry Hop Fort Point, but the batch before that, um, Vicinity and Artaic. Those four Trillium, so I'm going to just say Trillium. <laughs> right, that's my second one. I have, I have yet, I have yet to have a bad beer from Trillium. Um, and 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 I'm starting to dig that whole New England, New England style IPA. Just like how you know that for for, for a long time now, there's been a clear distinction between a West Coast IPA and an East Coast IPA. Right, East Coast IPAs tend to be a little more balanced. Right, West Coast IPAs tend to be hop assaults. And then you got what I consider to be the next, the next. Uh, horizon and IPAs, which is going to be the New England IPA, which is massive juiciness, dry finishing, and incredibly turbid, making you want to take another sip. Right? You you want to take another sip of this beer, and before you know it, even though it's not like a you know the de- the double IPA may not be a ten percent IPA, but you, before you know it, you drink seven fifty of this eight eight and a half percent IPA, and, and and it just disappeared. You you don't know what happened to it. You you had 750 and then all of a sudden you got an empty bottle. You just smashed it because you, you didn't realize what was going on. So any beer from Trillium, I haven't had anything bad from them yet. So I'm uh, Trillium is probably my favorite brewery in the country right now. I know that's a lot to say for a really small brewery, but hey, it is what it is. Um, Avery, Uncle Jacob Stout. I've had some good beer from Avery, but Uncle Jacob Stout, I think, is we're gonna do a show on Friday nights. Um, in, the ne- in the next few weeks called Underrated Stouts. Um, I think one of them is absolutely a Uncle Jacob Stout. Um, it's a huge beer. You might you might want to you might want to let- lay it down for a-, a year or so because it can be hot if you have it fresh. But once you allow that beer to mellow out, oh my goodness. Talk about body. Talk about silky. Talk about bourbon Bourbon and, that, and that beer is sixteen and a half. So it's, yeah, that's, that's a big beer. Yeah, it's it's a huge beer, but but if you let it lay down and you let it mellow out a little bit, mm-hmm. it drinks beautifully, beautifully. It's it's a fantastic stout that a lot of people. I don't I don't, I don't know if people just kind of pass it over or if it doesn't have a if it doesn't have wide distribution throughout um throughout Avery's footprint. I don't know, but if you can if you can get that, oh my goodness, you're welcome. Um. Another beer that I had was it's from Richmond, and this is called the uh, Big Kahuna. 
So so there's a there's a, a restaurant in Richmond called Mekong. You may have heard of it. Fantastic beer bar. And what they do is the guy, his his name is An. It's a Vietnamese restaurant, and they have a fantastic tap lineup. And what they did this year was they took Ale Smith Speedway Stout, and instead of Randolin, on he 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 ondles the beer. <laughs> I don't know why he calls it that, but he ondles the beer. And they took Ale Smith Speedway Stout and put it on with toasted coconuts and coffee. The absolute best beer that my nose has ever smelled, and the taste the the, the taste lives up to the aroma. I mean, this is one of those beers where you you literally spend the first ten minutes. Just smelling the beer because it's it's that incredible, mm-hmm. and then you take you take you take a small sip and you're like, what? They did that? If 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 they could figure out a way to 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 talk to the folks over at Ale Smith, and um, I mean I guess maybe it's kind of like the Hawaiian Speedway style, right? It has coconut mm-hmm. coffee, maybe the same, but it it it, it was it was uh, incredible, incredible. And next door to uh, Mekong, they have a brewery now for the last year or so called The Answer. Well, you know, if you call your brewery the answer, you better bring it, right? <laughs> you better answer some questions. Well, yeah. they have this double IPA called Mega Blast. I wish I could remember the hops that are in it, but this beer was this this beer reminds me of a Trillium type IPA in that it's juicy and that it's dry finishing. So. Uh, I I was able to get a crowl- I was able to, to get some of that beer at the brewery and I got a crowler of it and th- that crowler it was a ten percent beer but it just it w- it was forget about it it was gone it was gone as soon as I started pouring it it was gone I might as well have spilled it because it, it it went that fast so <laughs> my uh my my fr- just a quick rundown Sammy Claus Baroque Trillium uh, Uncle Jacob Stout Big Kahuna Coffee Coconut over at uh at uh, uh Mekong, and the answer is Mega Blast. My 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 top beers that I can at least remember of um of twenty fifteen. Sweet, Freddie, what you got? So, of course, I live in Boston. Um, it's a little easier for me, obviously, to get some Trillium stuff. I love Trillium. Oh, my heart's with them. They produce beautiful beers. So I'm going to take a little turn and talk about some other local breweries and some other stuff. And I'm going to start with that. One beer I – so last week I mentioned a few beers, but one beer I, I seem to overlook that I had last year that kind of really blew me away Wow, how good it is. And, and I'm still like – I can't believe I didn't even mention it – was uh, Sunday Morning Stout. Mm-hmm. By oh. um, that's a that's, that's a Yeah, yeah that, that was – uh, and I, I was looking at, at my untapped. That's the reason I picked it up, and I, I, and I sorted by rating. And I'm like, how did I forget about a Sunday morning stout? And you want to talk about a beer that's gonna go toe to toe with your your KBS, your yeah. other bourbon barrel aged stouts. Um, just a beautiful, blended, little hot, but uh, mm-hmm. uh, nothing that you would think of. You know what I mean? If for the way it's made. It hits all the points you want in that that kind of style. You know? uh, Freddie, I'll say this real quick, Freddie. I think that beer drank differently on tap than it did out of the bottle. Yeah, I've only had it on bottle. Yeah, I've never had it on tap, so I, I yeah. can't say. But out of the bottle, that thing was just beautiful uh, for my for me. I thought that was an uh, incredible beer, um, and I can't wait. I think that's I believe it's dropping soon too. I think in, sometime in February. I want to say. I uh, I did tweet them and they have responded to me. I just don't remember the exact date. Anyway. Um, other beers that I, I really liked, um, I mentioned this last time, but um, Treehouse Double Shot with Sumatran. It's their coffee stout uh, from Treehouse in Munson, Massachusetts. Um, I got a, a, a 750 growler of this, and uh, I was just taken back by how it, I think it's a six percent, like six six and a half percent ABV, and the body on this beer, the taste that they just it feels like they packed that entire 750 bottle with as much flavor and as much body as they possibly could you know what i mean like mm-hmm. if you can like <laughs> take every all these ingredients and just mash them down to this little bottle <laughs> and like force it that's what it was it was just a beautiful I, I keep saying i said this last time it's like they took like a milk chocolate and just like melted it and just like blended that with their coffee stop because it was that creamy, that rich, like chocolate malt. 
It tastes like a beautiful chocolate with tons and tons of like freshly ground like espresso beans kind of uh, kind of taste. You know, and the Sumatran coffee gives you that that it has like a slight like fruitiness to it, mm-hmm. not too much acidity. It was just a beautiful beer, and I was just really like one of those beers. I was like, no, I, I you know, I, I don't want this to end by any means. Which one was that again? It's a uh, Treehouse Double Shot. Okay. Brew with, uh, that, and they, they, they they brew that sometimes they do it with different coffee uh, variations. That was a Sumatran. Um, I had uh, some Hoof Hearted uh, in the last year that I kind of was like, whoa, that's a brewery in Ohio. Some of the double IPAs, uh, amazing, very good, very turbid. Um, again, uh, some I think if you when you speak local, another brewery that people seem to pass up, and I think you know, hopefully. Sometime this year we'll have them on the show, but I think it's Jack Abbey's. Um, they only do lagers, and I think people forget w- what lagers are. They think of lager, and they think of like your basic American lager, right? Mm-hmm. They don't see, they don't think about other variations of what they can do to that. They forget mm-hmm. about Baltic porters. They forget mm-hmm. uh, you can sour lagers, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and Jack Abbey's at the. Um, I actually went out one night. Um, to a, a, a local oyster bar, they have excellent tap on this, and they had uh, Jack Abbey's Kiwi Rising, which is by itself is an excellent beer, but they had that triple dry hopped with Nelson, mm. and I'm talking about we, we, we drank some, we had a trillion beer, we had uh, some Grim Artisan Ales, uh, Terra, I think it's called Terracotta, Terra Scott, their double IPA, I thought we had some really, really like, now people s- seek for, sought after IPAs, and um, this this triple dry hopped Kiwi Risen Lager would go. It was probably the best beer of the night as far as that goes, and it was a lager. You know, this you it's you would be hard pressed to be like I have this is what I'm drinking. Like if you had that, the aroma on that beer was just bursting with flavor. On the palate, same thing. It had provided bitterness. It had dropped tons of flavor on it. It was just an amazing beer. Um, all their framing hammers were really good. Anyway, I'll uh, keep this going. Um, I had tons of sours in 2015 that I've really enjoyed again. A DeGard from Oregon blew my socks off with their sour. I was just like, I've never experienced such a thing like that. Like, I, you know, you've you've had a sour from other, uh, like, you know, Gil Salahi, Cricket Stave. I've had my Cricket Stave. I had DeGard, and I was like, just completely slapped in the face where how the hell did they get like this? Yeah. It was just a, a complete mesh of, of tartness, of, 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 it was just, it was like for a second you think this thing is overly tart, but then it just like metals out quickly and it just blends cor- correctly, you know, but at least keeps you want to drinking more. And it's just very like you get all the saliva in your mouth, like that puckering, like you eat a sour candy and you, 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 your saliva glands are just producing saliva and just like, I need something to drink. And you drink another sip, that kind of thing, effect to it. It was just beautiful. Tons of citrus just burst in there, like one of those little bubble gum or candies. It, it was incredible, man. If 2015 by far was it, like you said, yeah. there's some awesome comeback beer. beers too that were amazing, like uh, Death by Coconut uh, was a comeback <laughs> yeah. beer, which was divine. I mean, love it. <sighs> I, 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 I wonder if they make a small batch for a special reason or their oh. distribution is too big and that's hard to go because, I mean, that thing was... It was, it was going mention, faster than Bourbon County around here this year. It yeah. was just amazing. Yeah. The limit was much smaller. Uh, I was going to make a Choco Vesa for Stone. Choco Vesa, yeah, that's a good Choco Choco Vesa, That was well, yeah. phenomenal uh, the, for me. The chart, I just... So far, that, no, 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 no. That's 2016. Yes. <laughs> you got, you got to wait till next year to talk about it. <laughs> but yeah. last year I had their bombers, the bombers. But I, I, yeah, just a couple like, beers that need to be mentioned, like, uh, like <laughs> Death by Coconut. And yeah. there's a brewery that is distributing, a Brazilian brewery. It so happens that is distributing in the U.S. Uh, called uh, uh, Walls, and they have a stout. Uh, it's called Petroleum. It's a Russian imperial stout. It's thick. Awesome, amazing beer. Unfortunately, they just got bought by Anaheim's Bush, you know. Well, but, look, you I, know. I, I, so I don't know how was the beer after they got they got bought. Uh, they just got bought a few months back, two or three months back. But there wasn't. Uh, I was so happy to see on the shelves and grab something because there was a Brazilian beer, and all of a sudden, they and start real, drinking this amazing thing. Yeah, real quick, and the fact that Fred, I want to move on after this, but since Freddie brought up uh, Jack's Abbey. If if you ever get the um okay we know all they do is lagers their Baltic Porter Framingham Hammer 
Mm-hmm. They they bourbon barrel aged that beer, and oh my goodness, that beer is absolutely, without a doubt, 100%. I think bourbon barrel aged Frame and Hammer can go toe to toe with any with any bourbon barrel stout, I think out there. Yeah, and I this would... that that's that yeah, I'm gonna just leave that right there. That same night I had the Kiwi Rising, I had their um, bourbon barrel maple Framing Hammer, which was yeah. stupid good. But the it best way to have sense. a porter is a it's a traditional porter that is made lager style for me. I like more when it's a traditional uh, Baltic porter. Uh, well, they do it. Um, you know, it just they definitely do it. Yeah. So um, I, w- I want to move on real quick, but first, hey Ashley, how you doing? Hi. What's up? Ashley making a pints and quarts cameo tonight. <laughs> um, I want to talk about so obviously one of the more popular beer amongst um, craft beer purists and craft beer non-purists alike is a beer that's technically not even craft anymore, and that would be uh, the whole Goose Island Bourbon County lineup of beers, right? Um, They changed format this year. They went with the 16-ounce bottles. Um, I mean, I I I don't necessarily care one way or the other. It works for me. I mean, I don't I don't care. I I could go for a pint of Bourbon County Stout, but don't bother me. But nonetheless, the the big issue with their release this year, and everyone's heard about it by now because the beer was released on Black Friday, but the infection issue. Um it's been it's for, as far as I know, it's only been two of the beer two of the beers within that lineup that have been affected, and that's the Bourbon County Coffee Stout. Which was the one that was everybody was aware of at first, and then like on on New Year's Eve night, I was like, "Well, well I say it's last year's barley wine was incredible." We were talking about that before we came on air. Last year's barley wine was incredible, and then I got this year's barley wine. I was like, "Oh my Thank goodness, this this is about to be amazing!" And I cracked it open, and I poured it, and I smelled it, and I was like, "Hmm, that's interesting." That, that smells a little, a little different than what, than what I remember last year smelling like, right? Yeah. So then, so then I go to take a sip, and I was like, hmm, this beer is a little sour, kind of, sort of, a little bit. There's a, there's a tang in there. And then I, and then I took another sip, another sip. I was like, this, this ain't right. This beer ain't supposed to taste like this. Drain pour because I'm sure some people might like a sour barley wine. And there were probably some, <laughs> there were probably some people who drank it and loved it. But it's like, you 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 know how um, you have your mind fixed for one beer, absolutely. And you taste it, and and it's something's not right. Just just like last year, Gil, um, we 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 swore up and down that there that something was different with brown sugar. Yeah. yeah. And 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 it was. I, I, I would give I would give my finger. Yeah, <laughs> Gil, bought, Gil bought a case of of of, of twenty of twenty fifteen. I guess well, twenty fifteen brown case. sugar, expecting twenty fourteen brown sugar, and it was not. But it was still a fantastic beer. But if you have your mind fixated on brown sugar and you taste this beer, you're like this is a straight up IPA. Yeah, and that's that's when we were talking to them. I was trying to explain. It was not a bad beer by all right. means, but it just didn't. Fill the expectation I had it. I, right. I, I because I didn't buy an amazing hoppy, you know. Uh, right, right. You, you didn't buy sucks. You yeah, didn't no, I didn't buy sucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so this year my barley wine it wasn't it wasn't what I wanted. It it it, it was off and I was upset. But none, nonetheless, it is what it is. I'm not about to send two empty bottles back to Goose Island for six dollars a pop. No, thank you. Ridiculous. I'll just I'll just give you bad press. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's, Not really. But I mean, so So late, both right? both the coffee and the barley wine. Yes. Yeah. So as soon as so, right the coffee was like mind. every like coffee was the big thing if if you were in, in Facebook groups, if you were yeah. on Beer Advocate, uh and, and all these craft beer forums, um the discussions, that was like literally within a matter of weeks, days, people were just like it just started like and then people just started sharing batch numbers and they forget mm-hmm. it. Floodgates open. People that only bought a limit, maybe they were only limited to one each. You know, they wanted they wanted to create create a vertical, whatever they were selling. Mm-hmm. They actually, you know, being inquisitive, they said, "All right, I'm just gonna open mine." Boom. 
Fact, I think, yeah, I, like, I, think I watch just, a review from that. What's that guy? Uh, Chris Dells, um, Beer Geek Nation. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, and I think he said there was something off, strange yeah. at the time with that. Yeah. Year. Yeah. Well, I had I had two. Both of them came from the same batch, and the first one was affected. And I was like, man, I hope I don't hope the second one isn't affected. But I looked at the batch number; it was exactly the same, and I was I was sad. I was saddened because that's a that's a really good barley wine, man. Oh, but nonetheless. It just so happens tonight that Freddie has a Bourbon County barley wine, which is the batch right above mine. Mine no. was six. Mine was sixteen eleven. Freddie, what's yours? Uh, six twelve. Sixteen twelve. Sixteen twelve. 16, 12. 16, 12. So, right Freddie, I didn't get any because I don't buy their beer anymore. I just get if people give me for free. Well, actually, wow. well, so here I got this. Uh, you know, friends in beer. Um, over here for me at least the variants are. The, the the regular, the base, fairly not easy, but it's easier for me to get. The variants, forget about it, done. Uh, pretty tough to get, and uh, you know I'm lucky enough to know some people. So we're gonna use the opener. We're gonna crack this bad boy open. We're gonna see what he's about. So while now, Freddy, now I have know. to admit, uh, you know we all criticize uh, their marketing, you know, but that 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 bottle with that little now the huge that's a smart. Market move right there. I, 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 you know, originally before when they were when they showed prototypes of this, I was like, "And eh, this looks kind of stupid, whatever." It's a beautiful bottle. Now it that I, yeah, when I when I first saw it released, I'm like, "Dude, this is this is nice. I love yeah. I love the label up here in the neck. You know, that shows you the vintage. It shows you, yeah. uh, you know, English style, Chicago made." Yeah, you know, I just, that's the problem. Nice. They were too worried about the label and the bottle. They forgot to check the beer and got yeah. the <laughs> So, so while Freddie gets that in the glass, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this right now. I'm done. I'm done with with Bourbon County. Period. I, I I don't I don't give my money to Goose Island, but I willingly become a hip, a hypocrite once a year when Bourbon County comes out. And now with this, like, hey, when I you, can tell when, you already, when it's infected. <laughs> So we're, hold, 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 no, hold, hold on, hold on, yeah. but real quick, to add on, real quick. I, I, the 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 base, the regular Bourbon County this year was really good. It was, it was, but really but, but I'm gonna say this: if once you sell out to Anheuser Busch, yep. one one of the main points with that is that you get access to all these different quality control measures. You get access to to this to that. It's supposed to make the product I'm glad better. Glad you said that. I'm glad you and said for, that. For them to come out with. A, a bad product, and if for it to be as widespread, and and their their method of compensation is six dollars, no, no, yeah, you, that's so you, funny, man. You won't get that's so. They weird. they will not get not near another penny from me. Can't have it. Won't do it. Snob like that. <laughs> anyway, Freddie. Freddy okay, says. so listen, let's, let uh, let me tell you exactly the first. I'm gonna give you the first like few seconds of when I open this. So I, I crack it open. This is Bourbon County. You get a flood. Oh, it's very aromatic, right? The I didn't get a barley wine. I didn't get any bourbon. I got almost like, like you like Randy said, a sour. I got like a sour cherry, like note just slapped me in the face, and I was like, whoa. I poured this in here. Same thing. It almost, I mean, I'm not even gonna, I haven't even drank it yet, but just by the nose, it gives you, you get the barley wine. You do get it. You get you get some barley wine notes, right? You get this, like, it's already smells, it smells sweet. It smells like almost like a, almost like a caramel, or, or like some dark malt, you know, like some malts in there. But then you you can't help, you can't escape this. Something, something. Yeah, it's like it's like it's like almost like uh again I, I keep referring to this for me at least it's like a, like a cherry syrup almost mm. but it's like like a like a sour cream slash cherry syrup that's what I smell <laughs> like a yogurt like a cherry yogurt like a Greek yogurt <laughs> it doesn't belong there you know what I mean you just you just know it it's not, it shouldn't be up there a sour cream cherry syrup yeah it just smells really like, at the beginning it, it just like. As you pull away from it, that's when, it, for me, it hits me, and it's just like, okay, that's off. And I keep smelling it. I'm like, that's off, that's off. Drink. <laughs> yeah, you know, just say it was a great year for craft beer like we talked before, but there was a lot of sad moments as well, you know. Yeah, see, that's, that's which, not, which that's, is like, that's not Bourbon County Ball. Uh, that's exactly what it's I It's definitely, it's yeah. definitely infected big time. I mean, I mean, when I tell you, not to the taste, I, I don't, listen. 
This thing, this thing was like a vanilla bomb in the past years. Yeah. Big vanilla, yeah, big barrel yep. characteristics. One of the, one of the best stuff. smelling beers. I mean, yeah, the, the beautiful. aroma on this beer was, was a big, big deal. If you, I don't know if, I don't know if Randy or he knew people who said that they just finished it and they loved it and they, they thought it was really good. If that is the case, I'll contact me and I'll give you mine. <laughs> <laughs> Well, maybe, I, maybe 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 they have, they have they have written sour on the label. You'd be like happy as a puppy, you know. Not even because this is uh, not even like this is like, like uh, it's a man. Listen, that whole Greek yogurt sour creamness, it's there. It's like, it shouldn't be there. You know what I mean? Like it's it's just this really off. Big, you can't enjoy. It. There's no way, and I'm not even like, I'm like seriously when I tell you that this is. You know, I'm gonna take one sip for the sake of the show, but this is not enjoyable. And drink. it stays on your palate for a while, and it's it's not good, man. That's not what you. And it, it, it like the bourbon to me is just, it's crazy. Like, it's overwhelmed. It's it's, it's almost secondary to this off taste now. Yeah, the the, the other thing for me about it is there's way too many good oh, beers oh, out yeah, there for me to have to worry about. Bourbon County or in Goose Island, you know. And how 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 this how this had the ability for this to be bottled and then right QA to drink this and say yeah. let's keep it going is don't, don't don't they test this stuff like exactly this- that, that's what that's what that's what worries me because if that's the case obviously not only us we're talking about hundreds and thousands of people whatever the case is. Got had this issue, and not only that, but it's almost a slap in the faces for Bourbon County to say, "Send us, let us know the not number, send us information. We'll give you six bucks, the limit of two bottles." Like you know, we said earlier. That, that, first of all, this doesn't cost me six bucks. It didn't cost the person that sent me the six dollars. Right, cost more than that. Exactly. Secondly, it's, you're not going to pay me for, or the people who waited in line for this. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? For, yep. for that kind of thing, they should respect people that are going out to get that beer, who respect the brewery still after whatever the case is that they sold out, right? Yep. They should, they should, they, what they should have done is give some kind of a ticket or something. So the next release, yeah. that person either get mailed in or get priority or getting, you know, some kind of restitution f- for beer. Yeah. So the people that had to wait in line, because I think it's a big deal. It's just not buying, it's just not going there and buy a beer off the shelf that oh, didn't go gross. well. This is people who are waiting in line, you know, for hours to get that. Yeah. So it's, is it is it then giving giving somebody six dollars for a beer that they paid ten, eleven, twelve dollars for that you messed up? Fifteen is is not is not a is not a, a you need to hire a new marketing person because that is not yeah. the way to retain customers. Okay, yeah. people paid at least twice that price for the beer, and you're gonna give them six dollars saying sorry? No. No, that's not acceptable. Whack. With so, a simple apology, like, oh, we know this. It's it, even deeper. Like, how? Listen, smaller pe- smaller breweries, smaller companies. Period. And I'm only talking about beer. Period. Produce things, and they go through a, a vigorous quality assurance, right? It's like anything else, because that is the name of the company where you're drinking. You think about that, right? You think Goose Island. Let's be frank. I think of Goose Island. I'm not thinking of Honkers Ale. Yeah. I'm not thinking. Of I'm thinking of Bourbon County right off the bat. Yeah. Yep. So that's almost like the signature. So mm-hmm. now you're just crapping all over what you had before, it's and good. it just so happens that InBev is behind, and you would think there would be improvements in other areas. But it was just. Yeah, I'm not sure how that how that is related, but it is an aggravation for for a company that you already have. Uh, you know some, some, some different some feelings about feelings about it. Yeah. You know, it just just come to, you know, because so, that's anyway. None, nonetheless, I wanted Bourbon County Barley Wine, not Funky Jubilation. So you guys, you guys owe me for that test. Um, that's not cool. <laughs> <laughs> the next beer I drink is it's gonna be off for the first couple sips. And, and maybe that's what happened to me New, New Year's Eve night because every beer I had after that was off, and I was like. Yeah. Man, what? Do I, I wash my glass out, like thinking maybe there was some infection in my glass or something. Dude, <laughs> I didn't know what's going on. Yeah, I All I can taste is like funk, and it's not even like a good funk. It's like just 
I had the same stop. problem on Christmas. I select a bunch of beer that I thought would be amazing, <laughs> and it was a uh, was not a very well, not the best picking beer Christmas day that I ever had. For some reason, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe too much food didn't <laughs> bold so, well. So be, be, before before we um move on or before we actually before we end the show, um. What, what what are some of your expectations for for 2016? Right, Ashley, you joined us, so I'm, you're the last one to join, so I'm gonna give you a chance a chance to go first. What are your expectations for craft beer in 2016? Well, I think it's gonna be a twofold. Sours are gonna get big. I mean, they're already pretty big, but they're gonna get a lot bigger. Yeah. But on the other hand, we're gonna have even more pushback from the big guys. You're gonna start seeing all the beer breweries they just bought in your market, not just Goose Island, but all of them. And so there's going to be a fight for tap space and things like that. And, you know, the beer geeks are all about, which we're talking about here, Bourbon County. They're going to be all about the things that they sell out of these other brands. And, oh, mm-hmm. Tin Barrel. We didn't, we've never seen Tin Barrel. Let's get Tin Barrel or Elysian or whatever. Yep. So it's, it's going to be kind of a fight with that. Um, it should be fun. Jill. I agree. I agree with Ashley. Uh, I think it's not only sours, but I think sours is going to be the, the pulling. What's going to be pulling the craft beer? It's alternatives. Uh, alternative styles, I think, are going to grow as well. Uh, and I think sour is going to be the big thing. But I, I think the bear wage uh, groups the still going to go. You know, you're going to see a lot of bear wage again. Um, a lot of new stuff. I, I'm, I'm thinking that. Because there's so many breweries out there, I think there's going to be a lot of beers with stuff that we haven't heard about it. You know, uh, all kinds of weird name ingredients. Um, I think it was, it's going to be a year that the 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 wheat and the weed going to be, you know, sorted out. I think it grew to a size that, and I, and and then by no, I don't agree with the whole thing. There's too many breweries. I think there's a lot of customer base to grow. But I do think that we'll see a dwindle down uh, on a lot of breweries, uh, you know, uh, stuff that are good. Because I've I've been to way too many breweries this year, this in 2015, that you w- n- you know none of the beers were salvageable, and you wonder how they got it open. And I think that's going to be a trend. I think we're going to still see a lot of breweries opening, but we're going to see a lot of breweries closing. Not because there's too many, but just because they they don't make good enough stuff that you know they gonna be able to be open. Freddie, I'm gonna jump on there with Ash and Gill. Same thing. I saw it. I see it here in the northeast. I see the local breweries around me. They're buying a lot. Like again, I, I mentioned this a few times, but Jack Abbey's. You know, they 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 per, they got a bunch of fooders. Trillium. Tons of fooders that that's all they're gonna sour in Jack Abbey's as well. So I see that the sour push really going forward a bunch of people. Um, but it, I think craft beer in general, I think uh, again with all the breweries popping up, I think people are really being pushed now. Breweries, you know how Gil said like the the, 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 the weeds are gonna be picked apart, you know, so you're gonna be able to separate things. But I think that's a, that's an awesome drive and just a competition. Um, in the in the competition, people are now really pushing their beers trying to step it up more you know i think some brewery you're gonna see a lot of breweries again like stone now you know enjoy by big slap on the label unfiltered mm-hmm. you, you know as i say like you know mimicking copying stealing is the biggest form of flattery i, th- I think what you're going to see now is that a lot of other breweries all, the, all over the country are going to notice of what's going on they're involved they see what's going on they're in social media what people want what's trading what's being bought what prices people are spending, and people are gonna breweries are gonna take that on. So it's also gonna help the you know craft beers. I think it's gonna even grow even more, especially because let's say Gil opens a craft brewery, it's on 16, right? I'm a home brewer. Gil does well. It gives me a little bit more uh, encouragement to say maybe that's what I really want to do forever. Maybe I go and try that. So I think we're gonna continue. It's continue. There's like, again, there's just tons of room to grow, and we're gonna see again more adjuncts. More crazy beer styles and people mixing things. A lot more collaborations going on. Um, a lot of unfiltered beer. Yeah, a lot of unfiltered beer. Barrel aging, of course, is just going up, 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 up. As you can see, even with the price of barrels, as you see, people are still barrel aging like crazy. 
Yeah, I think that's just going to continue on. And I, I think it's still going to be great. I mean, 2015 kind of opened a lot of doors for people. I think 2016 is going to do the same. I think it hasn't even come close yet to reaching where it can be. Um, <clears throat> I think 2016... It's gonna. It's gonna be. I think the end of 2015 was a harbinger of what's gonna happen, a harbinger of what's gonna happen in, in 2016. There's gonna be a lot more acquisitions than we care to admit. There are gonna be a lot of breweries selling out. Um. Well. Well, selling. I, 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 selling I like, out. I like to, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was just about to say. I use that. I because use that, that term that, very loosely because yeah. breweries. As I said before, it's not. Sell your breweries to who you sell. Whom do you sell to? I think. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I I think okay, I think that that ABN Bev and Miller, or if they combine, whatever, they they're gonna be a lot more active in the craft beer world. Um, I think that that's just the the, the way it's gonna be. That's something that we as craft beer nerds we have to we have to accept. Um, and, and the reason why I said I use the term selling out loosely is because, you know. People people have reasons for doing what they do, and 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 I mean you never know why people choose to to put their beer put their brewery on the market. They may have a legitimate reason. They may they may have they may have been in the game for a long time, and they want an extra strategy because they're reaching that point in their life when they need to start thinking they start planning for retirement or or whatever. I mean it could be a number of reasons why. So I can't really knock anybody for doing it. I certainly can't knock Ballast Point because. Hell, I would I would not turn down a million million dollars. (laughs) So, but but nonetheless, I mean, I think that's just going to be the 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 way of the world as it relates to craft beer. But the good thing is, as of December 2014, we got 4,000 plus craft breweries in the country. So if you if you got a problem with 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 breweries, um, well, again, lack for lack of a better expression, you got a problem with breweries selling out. Well, guess what? You got four thousand plus minus one uh, different choices to choose from, right? So, um, I just, I just think that's we we gotta accept that. We gotta accept that that's the way it's gonna be. As much as we don't want to admit it, it is, it is what it is, and that's that's the way it's gonna be. Yeah, we need to stop bitching about it and just move on to the next right. good thing. So, um, that said, again, just like I said at the beginning of the show. Please join us next week when we have uh, Neil Whitty on from, I guess technically he's from, he's from Boulevard. He's from, uh, Omegang. from from Omegang. He's from from Duval. He's halfway from Firestone Walker. Gross. And also, we want to let you guys know, and I just realized none of us have our lower thirds up tonight. Um, <laughs> be sure. <laughs> be, we're, be sure. we're a train rack tonight. Yeah. Uh, go go check out our friends at Mancan. The, those guys are, are changing, or they have changed the growler game, and now they give you the ability to go and actually get beer on tap and essentially keep it fresh. I'm not gonna say indefinitely, but for a considerably longer than you would if you just had a regular a regular growler. You get this growler filled. It has a little CO2 can, so you can actually put put the beer under CO2. Put them in your fridge, and they have two versions. One has, one has an actual Perlick tap handle, so you can actually pour beer from the tap from the tap handle in your, and right in your fridge. Or you can get the one with the picnic tap, and they have they they have a 64 ounce uh, version, and they have the 128 ounce version. I think they actually do have a 32 ounce uh, version as well. So, be sure to check those guys out. They're making a good product. They've revolutionized the growler game, and yeah, good stuff. So that's until then, until next week, find some great friends, get some great beer, and mind those P's and Q's with my empty glass. Yeah, yeah. Freddie giving the thumbs down to Burma County Barley Wine. But everything else is cheers. <laughs> <laughs>